They were about a mile and a half away, and I said, you call them. And she says, Equa Yungsa, Equa Yungsa. In Cherokee, that's big buffalo herd. A few minutes later, here all the herd came and went from one pasture to the next. This is Dave Hutchinson from Rose, Nebraska. We're on the Hutchinson Organic Ranch. Bison roam year round in their natural habitat. We're caretakers of the bison. Well, I like to think of it that way so that they can go on for generations. I want to be a good caretaker of the land for the wildlife and for so that we can live on it, live it in harmony with the land, undisturbed. Keep the buffalo in their natural habitat so that they can be the bison that they were for centuries. We never put them in a feedlot. They're 100% certified organic. They're 100% grass fed. They live off the land just like they did for thousands of years. This is blessed land. I think it's worth taking note of. I think it's worth caring about. And I don't think that people can care about it if people don't know about it. We really, I think, have to make um, a big effort to introduce people to the places that we love and explain why they matter. Parsnips, if you plant them in the fall, you can dig them up in the spring. Right. And so it's just a great thing for the spring soups right now. So you mm -hmm. still want a nice hearty, stick to your bones yeah. dish, um, but you're being able to utilize some of the spring vegetables that are coming up, like the parsnips. So do you want to make some stew? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna get some bison out here. I'm using an arm roast from Hutchinson Ranch okay. because um, I prefer the lean cuts over the chuck. Bison's so lean that mm -hmm. it cooks really fast, and so there's kind of two ways you have to go with bison, um, which I think you know you're familiar with mm -hmm. this too. But you either have to do it fast and hot, like super fast, right. or you do it low and slow. And so in this situation, we kind of use two techniques, which is traditional in beef stew. But you know, I'm browning all of it, and a lot of people right. think that you know you're browning things to keep moisture in. I don't necessarily <laughs> believe that. I think you're browning things because you get that great bond and you get that caramelization mm -hmm. and that exactly. flavor profile, right? I get a chance to show somebody, yeah. especially someone from the coast. To say, look at this place is really something and there's something valuable to it right. that a lot of people overlook or mm -hmm. they just don't, um, they don't understand. And I think we have so many wide open spaces in between each mm -hmm. place that you go to that um, you have to really commit to the value of the emptiness. If you don't have a lot of people around, and that means you have even fewer people to care. Well, and then you meet people like Dave, like he intentionally moved out there to 5,000 acres. With that express purpose of yeah. what he's doing right now. Yeah. Like and he's fulfilled what he intended to do. He's made it his life's work, and mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's something. Yeah. What does it mean to you to be a caretaker of this? I mean, really, because we're sitting, we drove, we're driving out here, we see, you know, an old center pivot, you know, and you're talking about other people years ago trying to irrigate this land and, and 
helping you to put commodity crops on it and things like that and the work that you've done to restore it and to also maintain what was already here and preserve it. What does it mean to you to be the person who's done that for this beautiful space? Well, we just like we're caretakers of the bison. And I like to think of it that way so that they can go on for generations. I want to be a good caretaker of the land. And we want to keep the land pure. We don't want to destroy it so that future generations can come up on these hills and look for 40, 50 miles in one direction and see how pure the land is and the nice grass and the hills that are undisturbed. This is sand and it's the largest stabilized sand dune in the world right here. Do you ever just like find yourself out here trying to clear your mind and what does that do for you? It keeps my mind clear. <laughs> well, it, it is really neat to be out here when it's quiet and nice and you're by yourself and you learn to think. Sometimes when I have a problem, I'll think about it and I'll just come out and drive around certain areas of the ranch. And it's amazing because sometimes those problems that you think you have get solved or you figure out a way that you can solve that problem. That's happened many, many times. Uh, I just take a nice, easy drive and you can see things that need improvement or have a problem that you can't solve and all of a sudden the answer's right there. Do you and Sue or the kids, or did you guys ever come out here even when they were younger and just like have a picnic out here? Just... We'd come out here and we actually would ski down this big hill here. No trees, but we'd ski and we did a lot of snowmobiling. And Sarah, she used to swim in these lakes. She calls that sacred pond or secret pond because you never know that's even there. Do you think that's why she's the one that stayed? Well, I think so. Think... I mean, I told her when she went to college, I wondered her. I hated to see her go to college, but I said, you know, you don't have to come back to the ranch. And she said, well, you can't keep me away. Fed, it's not gourmet. Those are kind of my, <laughs> right. my terms, but that's really nice. That's good. You can actually taste like with the pepper. Like there is some more. It adds depth, doesn't yeah. it? Hear the wind, see the lakes, see the grass, see the bison. It really is just the most peaceful place. <laughs> <laughs>